All right. Um, a couple of folks have asked questions about factoring quadratics using what I've called the AC method. So I just want to show that to you. Here's a question that requires factoring by grouping with the AC method. It says to solve. And as a reminder, solve means to find all of the values of x that make the equation true. There will happen to be two for this particular equation. But to solve doesn't mean just find one answer that works. It means find all of them. And it says to solve by factoring. So although you could use other methods like estimating with your calculator or using the quadratic formula to check it, if, if this was an exam, we want to know whether you know how to factor. And so you would have to show your work factoring to get full credit for a question like this. Um, the first step is recognize that this polynomial is in standard form on this side and it's set equal to zero. Before you try to factor a polynomial, you need to make sure that you get all of the terms on one side and have the other side equal to zero. Otherwise, you can't use the zero product property to say each of those factors must be zero. Uh, it is in that form and so just for terminology, the standard form for the polynomial is ax squared plus bx plus c. And when we're factoring by grouping to solve an equation, the other side would be 0. This polynomial expression is in standard form. And so if we were talking about the different terms, we would say a equals 2, b equals negative 13, And my pen is not cooperating, so I'm just going to get a different pen here. B equals negative 13. This one's not working well either. And C equals negative 7. And you need to know these anyway if you wanted to use something like the quadratic formula, because when we write x is equal to negative b plus or minus square root, b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. We're talking about this a, this b, and this c. So recognizing this form and using it is important. Now when we're using the ac method, we're talking about the same letters. In this case, ac is 2 times negative 7, which is negative 14. We're looking for factors of negative 14 that add up to b, which is negative 13. And this one's fairly straightforward. I want factors of negative 14. Let me list them. I'm going to do factors of ac. Those are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 14, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 7. Okay. You can write the factor tree of, of 14. Remember, with a negative, uh, regardless of how we're doing this, you can do the positive or negative roots. You just need to make sure their product is appropriately positive or negative. Because there's a negative in front, one of the factors will be positive. One of the factors will be negative. All right? And then because they want, we want them to add up to 13, we can do this. We can say AC, and if I said negative 1 and 14, right? This is the product, has to be negative 14, and then the sum has to be negative 13. In this case, 14 plus negative 1 is 13. So although the product is negative 14, it doesn't add up to 13. I can fix that, though, by instead choosing 1 times negative 14. And in that case, I have 1 plus negative 14, which is negative 13, which is what I'm looking for. So now the trick with factoring by grouping using the AC method is we're trying to uncombine the middle term. So what we want to do is split this middle term, negative 13x, using our two numbers that we found here. We're going to rewrite 2x squared plus x minus 14x. Notice 
that this thing right here in the middle is the same as minus 13x. We've just rewritten it in a fancy way so that we can now have four terms to factor by grouping. All right, and then this is going to be minus 7, and it's still equal to 0. At this point, we group the first two terms and the second two terms and factor out the greatest common factor. In my first two terms, my greatest common factor is x, and so I get x times 2x plus 1. And in my second one, my greatest common factor is negative 7. Usually if there's a negative sign in front of the x, we factor out the negative and leave positive coefficients on the x. So this is going to be plus negative 7, or you could write minus 7. And when I factor out a negative 7, I get 2x. When I factor out a negative 7, I get plus 1. And that's equal to 0. And you'll notice now for these two terms, our leading coefficients are different, but this term in parentheses is the same. We can factor it out. We use the distributive property to put on. We're going to use the undistributive property, if you want to call it that. We're going to unmultiply these two terms. We're trying to come up with the original factor. So this, I'm going to factor out the 2x plus 1. And that thing was multiplied by x plus negative 7. I'll write that as minus 7. And now I've come up with the original pair of binomials that made my original quadratic. How would I check that? Let me foil it real quick. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times negative 7 is minus 14x plus x. That becomes 13x, yes. And then minus 7, yes, equals 0. So I foiled that out to check it. I mean, if you spend this much work to find a pair of binomials that we say is the same as the original, take the time to foil it out and just quickly check your arithmetic. At this point, we use the zero product property to say if this product is zero, then either 2x plus 1 is zero, or x minus 7 equals zero. And now we solve our two linear equations. This is a two-step equation. We subtract 1 from both sides. I get 2x equals negative 1, and then divide by 2 and I get x is equal to negative a half. On this equation, it's a one-step equation. I add 7 to both sides. I get x is equal to 7. Okay, so I've now come up with two solutions that I say solve my original equation. My last step is I need to go back in and check and make sure both of these answers work. If you've got a calculator, you can use that to speed this up, but I'm going to show you the steps real quick. 2 times negative 1 half squared minus 13 parentheses negative 1 half minus 7. Is that 0? Okay. Well, negative 1 half squared is positive 1 fourth. 2 fourths is 1 half. All right. This is negative times negative, so it's going to be positive 13 halves, so plus 13 halves minus 7. Right? Now, 7 is over 1. Right? And I could rewrite that as 14 halves. And we can see now that 14 halves minus, this is 14 halves minus 14 halves is indeed 0. Okay, so negative 1 half is a solution to this equation. And we'll do 7 real quick. 2 times 7 squared minus 13 
times 7 minus 7 is that 0? Okay, well, this is 2 times 49, which is 98. 7 times 13 is minus 91, minus 7, which is indeed 0. So the correct answer, if you want to write it as a set, is x, an element of this set, negative 1 half and 7. Those are the, this is the solution set to the original equation.